Singapore Sail Grand Prix Day 2. Who will catch Tom Slingsby? Who will keep Asia on top? Welcome to the decisive final day of the Singapore Sail Grand Prix as nine nations prepare for action in front of the stunning city-state backdrop. Despite light winds, there has been plenty of action in front of the crowds on shore. While in the F-50s, the pressure enters the red zone today for teams desperate for points to get to the season grand finale in San Francisco. I'm Todd Harris and I'm joined by Stevie Morrison, Emily Nagel and Lisa Darmanin for day two of the Singapore Sail Grand Prix. Well, the schedule calls for three races today, two fleet races, and then a final as the teams get ready to get into position. And the Singapore Travel Board, well, they have gotten the word out that this is the spot to be in Singapore as the final day of competition is upon us. The fans are on the water and on the shore, and despite similar light winds to today, day one provided a great showing at the Singapore Sail Grand Prix. The Singapore Sail Grand Prix got off to a slow start on day one, with light winds forcing the F-50s to race with only four crew members. Typically we take off the grinders in this lighter stuff, and for our setup, you know, we're running Rome, and then both CJs obviously on the boat. And I think each boat does it a little differently. As racing got underway, USA Sail GP team didn't quite get the start they were hoping okay, for. Spithill penalised, mounting even more pressure oh, on the we're driver. We're and his crew. This is the umpire's OCS penalty USA over the line early. The Kiwis looked strongest, managing to get to Mark 1 first, closely followed by the Australians. Great Britain and Canada, fighting for mid-table points, could only watch as Pete Burling claimed victory in race one. A slow pace, but it couldn't be better for the Kiwis. New Zealand wins the first race at the Singapore Sail Grand Prix. For the start of race two, it was Tom Slingsby who timed his start to perfection, managing to get up on the foils early and race away to Mark 1. Whilst much of the fleet sat dead in the water, Slingsby was building a commanding lead, until the USA team found the breeze and started matching the Aussies for pace. Spithill managed to reach gate four in the lead, claiming victory in race two, and more importantly, gathering valuable championship points. The Australians, disappointed to let one go, still go into day two, top of the leaderboard. Very stressful for us. In the first race, we uh, did our final attack with 40 seconds to kill and raced the whole way of the line and only got there with a half a second late. And then the second one, we were late again and uh, I think we had a minute to kill, but we only just got there. So even the two-time reigning and defending champions Australia feeling the pressure. The Australians out in front on 18 points after one day of racing. Great Britain and Canada sit in second on 14. And then the Americans and Denmark even on 13. Now remember, only the top three teams will make it into the final. New Zealand had a struggle. Remember, they were down four points before the event even started because of boat contact with the Americans in practice. Then it is Switzerland, Spain, and France rounding out the nine fleet field. And it's France has got to be the biggest surprise as they are currently third overall, but sitting dead last here in Singapore. So it looks like the breeze is starting to fill in just a little bit. It'll be interesting to see just how fast they will race today. Will they be foiling? How big will the course be? And how many races can we get in? Scheduled for three races, would that final be in the end? But we will see what Mother Nature provides. Final preparations being made for the entire fleet. And if you're lucky enough to be on the beach here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon in Singapore, you are heading to the Adrenaline Lounge. 
taking part in some very festive atmospheres and some of the finest food from Nobu provided on shore. And once again, our thanks to the Singapore Tourism Board for making this all happen and bringing out the large crowds. Well, for more intel down on the water and what should we can expect throughout this day, we check in with the fourth member of our broadcast team. Here's Lisa Darmanin. Well, the light breezes do persist here in Singapore. However, the rain came through a lot earlier today, which signals to me that we've got a better wind window in store for today's racing. It will be extremely challenging again with winds averaging 10 kilometers per hour and gusting to 14 kilometers per hour. It was from the southeast, but the direction is quite variable and it's being pulled a lot with the rain, pull, pulled around a lot with the rain clouds. If we do get those upper ranges in the wind speed, we will see foiling at 50s. They've had plenty of foiling in the practice laps, but it's really borderline on the foiling maneuvers. So to me, that's really gonna be the make and break of today's racing. There will be plenty of wind shifts as well, which I think that means there'll be plenty of opportunities for overtaking or extending if the strategist gets it right. It's going to be an exciting days of racing. Anything could happen. And I caught up with a few of the athletes earlier today to catch their thoughts on how they feel today might go. Quite a lot of changes, uh, both in how we operate the boat and who's, who's doing what, and also with the communications as well. Particularly in our live stuff, we're relying so much on Hannah to give us a feedback because with fewer crew, we're more heads down in terms of trying to sail the boat and operate the boat. So it does change the dynamic a lot. Um, but it's quite good fun as well to split things up a little bit. Well, yeah, configuration on board, um, yeah, I think we'll keep it fairly similar. You don't really want to change too much, but, but we've experimented a lot with different setups and combinations on board, and we feel this one's a fairly solid one, and yeah, it, it sort of gives us the most range to cross over for all conditions, so yeah, we'll stand by for now and see what develops out there on the water. Yeah, I think we changed uh, the configuration regarding Cadix and uh, we gave uh, the opportunity to Manon to, to catch the, the flight control position. That was the first time, I think, for the fleet and I think Manon did a really good job, uh, only one and a half day to train. And uh, yeah, I think she, she catched the, the opportunity and, and today she will prove that uh, that's, the, that's the good choice. The French in season one had Marie Roux in the flight controller position, so great to hear the French leading the way again. Light winds today means the pressure's on for the flight controllers. It's a straight line drag race to Mark 1, and the light winds means if you're behind, it's gonna be hard. Mark 1, we see the first split in the fleet. They'll sail off in different directions, looking to sail to the side of the course that they think will get them to gate two the quickest. At gate two, big choice to make as they can turn left or right. The leading boats, well, they're looking to select the favourable side of the course with the best wind. For the boats behind, it's a harder choice. Remember that sailboats don't sail fast unless they're sailing at an angle to the wind. So we're going to see them zigzag their way around the course, looking for the most wind and the fastest path. At each gate, the teams have an opportunity to attack or defend. It's light pressure on the water maybe, but don't underestimate how high the pressure is in the boats themselves today. And pressure certainly is the name of the game as we get ready for the first race here on Championship Sunday here at the Singapore Sail Grand Prix. The clock now approaching 3.15 to go, Stevie. Getting yourself in proper position. As Lisa pointed out, a little more breeze today, but I don't think you can count on that throughout the race. Best plan has got to be get out front, stay out front. Yeah, and that's, of course, what Tom Slingsby and his crew did so well. It's great to see all six on board the boat. I think uh, Lisa alluded to it, the strategists have got a big day. So for Tash Bryant, it's going to be a real head out of the boat day. And Ed Powers, well, he stepped in, did a great job as wing trimmer, replacing Carl Langford yesterday. But what can he do? I think two races yesterday, Todd, it means the fleet is so tight on points that for several of these teams out here, the next hour, I believe is going to define their season. So Australia looking very good. They sit on 60 points, the two-time defending and reigning champions. You look at other teams, though, going in and I'll tell you what, it is going to be very tricky, as Stevie pointed out. The course for race three is five legs. The axis is 175. Wind is approximately 14 kilometers per hour. So Melanie Roberts, the race manager, giving us the information pertinent to the start of race number three. Look at Great Britain, Emily Nagel. I'll tell you what, right now, this is a team desperate in need of a win. 
They need a win, but they've also got back Hannah Mills, strategist, and it, there's going to be a lot of pressure on her today to be heads out of the boat looking for the breeze. Today is all going to be about moding, deciding when to push for speed and get up on the foils versus sailing a shorter distance, keeping one hull in the water. So a lot of decisions to be made today. And Steve, you kind of a mixed bag as we approach 145 to go before the start of race number three. You think of a team like Canada. We saw them do some great things yesterday, but we also saw them fall to the back of the pack. Uncharacteristic. What does Phil Robertson need to do today? That's kind of their uh, season in a nutshell, isn't it? I mean, uh, the brilliance of Phil Robertson at the start, a lot of the time is really good. Isabella at the back, she's going to need to be a big help. We've alluded to that. But Billy Goodrum, it is going to be windy enough for flying. Lisa said how hard foiling right. maneuvers might be. Big day for you, Billy. So there are the dark clouds in the distance right now. The winds look confident. They look very stable, and we'll see what they can do. Remember, these F-50s can fly double what you see on your screen for wind speed. So we'll see what they do. And I'll be interested to see what New Zealand does. Do they go to the back now? We've seen the Kiwis pull this off before, Stevie, where they go to the very back and they hit the line at full speed. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get it. It's the first look for a lot of the teams. They're, they're just maneuvering at the back now. Australia first to turn back. Tom Slingsby mentioned how hard this timing was here. It's going to be tricky finding the space, I think, on the start now. But for New Zealand, for the USA, well, they were fast when they were free yesterday, but they need to get a good one. What can Tom Slingsby do? We can hear Tom Slingsby on the Australian boat. They're nearly on time here. Look at the start right hand side of screen there's going to be a lot of space for Tom Slingsby up here potentially but can New Zealand wiggle through at the bottom of the line it's going to be USA and Australia very tight at the end of the line closest to us pole position top end of our screen on the start line and New Zealand are hunting that down right now will they get in in time it's going to be tight for Tom Slingsby's Australia at the top of the line here watch for the line to turn white it's all about timing who's going to hit the line fastest sneaking in there to over Early. OCS penalty Australia over the line early. Wow, so tight. And out of the starters. middle of the line, it's going to be France who need need a result. And at the bottom of the line, New Zealand, once again, they had that four point penalty before racing began, put themselves back in the game. But Delapierre, last overnight, needs a result. He's going to lead at mark one. So Australia rolls the dice, it does not come up Yahtzee, and now the Aussies have to go to the back of the pack. But remember, they are leading on points coming into day number two. See now this downwind leg they're turning away from the wind now. The boats are going to accelerate a lot here, Todd. And for France and New Zealand, they should have control. First to set up, it's New Zealand. That yellow line suggests they should be able to make it to gate two from here. New Zealand turn on it. Who can stay on the foils? Tricky maneuvers in this light wind. New Zealand stay on the force. Brilliant turn by the French. Bottom speed, 33 kilometers an hour. 50 meter gain in that one maneuver for Quentin de la Pierre's French team. And they're going to be set up for gate two. It should be easy for them from here, but are they fast enough to hold off the fast charging Kiwis? Currently they are. 51 kilometers an hour of boat speed for the French. That's 28 knots really fighting with Kiwis now. Here we go, it's tight on the inside, it's New Zealand. The French must give the Kiwis room to round the mark. Can New Zealand sneak in in time? The French are going to be faster, but New Zealand have the right of way at the mark. So at gate number two, it's New Zealand that takes the lead away from the French and near contact right there as Quentin de la Pierre has to veer away and a great maneuver by Peter Burling and the Kiwis. And here comes the rest of the fleet with Switzerland currently sitting in third. It's light winds here, the French, as soon as they rounded the mark, the French were allowed to force New Zealand into the wind. He did so, had to turn away on New Zealand. Should be a clear incident there, I believe, but they're down one hull in the water. Let's listen in on board the French. It's all quiet on board there, but Switzerland in third, second at the moment. Good result for the Swiss and Australia and the USA out the back. Jimmy Spittle needs to make something happen here to keep his season alive. He has to make the final three here, I believe, to have any real hope of being in the grand final in San Francisco. And he's run into a roadblock in the form of Spain right in front of him. And there you see Australia, who's penalized at the start, sitting in dead last. So the Americans needed a much better performance here. 
go. So at the mark, New Zealand has the right of way, but as soon as they pass the mark, the French are allowed to turn up towards the wind, force New Zealand out of the way. Here we go, there we go. Aggressive from De La Pierre. Burling responds, but they lose so much speed. Wow, tight move. See how slow the Kiwi boat is here. Pete Burling just about to cross there. As we move up the course now, though, New Zealand's found the new wind. They're showing us fourth. So it's France, Switzerland, Great Britain and New Zealand, the top four. Then it's Denmark, Spain and the USA. This is the first race of three scheduled, but that third one is only for the top three. And there you see the distance between France and Switzerland, just 12.3 meters, and then a big gap back to Great Britain and New Zealand. But it is, Todd, but New Zealand are foiling. The French are foiling, but Switzerland weren't. There's more wind as you move away from the shore. This camera angle says that it's really close between Great Britain and New Zealand. Great Britain has the right of way. We've got to keep an eye on this. Has Burling judged it right? He's famous for being aggressive. He's pushing it. He's slow. That's going to go to Craig Mitchell. Don't be surprised to see a protest from Great Britain here. And again, New Zealand's going to have to dip behind France. Nothing from the umpires there. I think the penalty would be clear anyway, and New Zealand's going to have to go behind Switzerland. That side of the course is favoured. Big gain for Great Britain, but when he tacks, turns the boat through the wind, as we're about to witness now, it's going to be the French with the right of way. He's going to have to watch out for De La Pierre. All about keeping those average speeds up. British and French both averaging around 37 kilometers an hour. The British with more fly time hit. These maneuvers are crucial. Keep up on the foils, your average speed stays higher. Race number three, the first race of Sunday. This is leg three of five. They will go through gate number three, then head back down the course, and that'll be a short blast of the finish line. And Great Britain has put themselves in a great position, but France still leads. It's a big turn in the wind. The wind's rotated to the right. We can see Switzerland able to sail nearly straight up the course into second. They'll turn left, and I think they'll be well set for the next leg as France splits the course. Water move by the Swiss. They found the better breeze. They've sailed a shorter distance by getting a good angle. That's the voice of Nathan Outridge, the strategist. Well, pretty good strategist to have at the back of the boat there. Quicken the pace of the voices you hear on board. It's now Switzerland on the course, leading Great Britain. France has dropped back to third. Stevie, as they are forced to the less pressure side of the course, Emily. And here we've got French on the left-hand side of the course, the Swiss on the right, and slightly less breeze. Only 18 kilometers now of breeze on the Swiss side of the course, but the French have slightly more breeze further offshore. Should be good news for the French then. It'll be interesting to see what happens when they come back together. When they come back together, the French will have the right of way is another thing to add into the mix. But who's called it right? Is it Nathan Outridge in that strategy role? Or is it Contant de la Pierre and Manon at the back of the French boat? Who's solved the problem? Showing us a 20 meter gain to the Swiss at the moment on the ladder, but French have right of way. Keeping some in the bank here by going down a bit. Very good. Okay. Face looking and like he's going to jog. Okay, this is Nathan Outridge, Seb Schneider. Oh, wow, yeah. look at this. They are all coming together. Oh, this is going to get tight. He's got to miss him here. Wow, late decision by the Swiss. That's going to cost him a lot of distance. Misjudgment there is tight, but they may still make the left turn. French manoeuvre. New Zealand have somehow passed. The British must have been a good manoeuvre. And here we go. Coming into gate number four at the bottom of the course. There's just one leg left here, Todd and Burling, and two on New Zealand. Zealand, what a move. And it is now a race to the finish. What is going to go? We have four going into that one last gate. So tight, and New Zealand say they want to turn at the same time as Switzerland. We saw that the side of the course where Switzerland's heading to was favoured on the last time we went into the wind, and don't expect a difference here. Let's get ready for a sprint to the finish. Not the best manoeuvre there by the French team. We saw their speed drop below 20 kilometres an hour. If we throw back to that last leg, we see how the Swiss sailed so much less distance, 1.6 kilometres compared to Kiwis who sailed over two and did three maneuvers versus the Swiss one. That's the 
Moussa Hanna Milsa, and we're going nicely here, and they're trying to work out how to close up towards France. Switzerland and New Zealand, they've done a good job. Wow. Wow. Ah, well, so Hannah Mills doing a great job in the back. Well, doing a great job in the back, but right-hand side of the screen, that's the battle for first. And New Zealand, well, Switzerland are holding them off. This could be their first race win in Sail GP for this new Swiss team. And they happen to do it the hard way. They've got the Kiwis breathing down their neck. There's the finish line, top of screen. Should be one or two more maneuvers for both teams. New Zealand and Switzerland. And is Outridge, he's talking Seb through it. This will be the final maneuver. It'll either be Switzerland or New Zealand getting the win. New Zealand turns first. That's it. Can Switzerland set great maneuver by the Swiss boat? Can they stay on the foils? Oh, New Zealand's getting pretty angry there on board Outridge. Now, New Zealand, one more turn for each boat. Right of Bay will be with New Zealand. And here comes Denmark into the picture. Yep, we're going to go to ley line and tack around the left mark, and that's what wins the race, OK? Keep it fast. Do not get slow. And exactly how Nathan Outridge dialed it up, Switzerland goes into the record book as they pick up their first win in Sail GP, and it comes in Singapore. What a finish for Switzerland as they come from the back of the pack to get the win ahead of New Zealand. Denmark comes in third, and it'll be France and Great Britain who are having a great battle on the other side of the course. I tell you what, Todd, that has done some damage to the overalls here in Singapore. Ne Emily Nagal has got a big five minutes ahead of her trying to work out what's happened on here because Australia, they're in eighth. USA in seventh at the moment. It's so tight. So with those numbers there, we've got a three-way tie currently for first with the Kiwis, Danish and Aussies all on 21 points. GBR just behind on 20. Oh. Wow, Great Britain needed that one. Remember, they got a fifth, and they finished in third yesterday in races yeah, one good. and two, and this is not the result the Americans were looking for. So it's Switzerland, New Zealand, and Denmark, the top three here in the first race, and another tight cross here. Australia unable to recover from that penalty right off the start. There you go. Not a good result in seventh for Australia. However, they did have the best day yesterday. As Emily says, they'll still be sat at the top of the park. This one for Jimmy Spittle. He's going to have to win the next race in Canada as well. We've got to see some aggressive moves. It's like this, but the boat's not turning. So it's just got to be a smooth radius. I think you've got to help her a click too, CJ. Attacked. Oh. Uh, the debrief. debrief, yeah, it's already started. <laughs> yeah, man. And it sounds like Australia and USA are not happy Thank maybe the way the boat is sailing, but there's obviously problems there, but not for yeah, Sebastian good, Snyder in Switzerland. Stevie, we knew this day would eventually come, and when you add Nathan yeah, Outridge as a tactician to the boat, you're on the right direction. Yeah, and it was getting pretty heated. Nathan was getting pretty vocal back there, but Seb, well, he really delivered. And that, and that moment where they had to dip the French on the on right. the downwind, I mean, they were aiming at each other for, for a minute there. I mean, that was uh, could have been rabbit in the headlights moment, but it wasn't. Uh, they dealt with it well. Brilliant to see. Throwing back to the start here. OK, neither of these teams did well in overall, but quite the start for Australia and USA. Australia from 30 seconds out called that the top of the line was open, but clearly from about 15 seconds, the Thanks, USA Zoe. spotted them coming down and decided they're going to shut them out, both aiming at the same point at the top of the line. Australia at 10 seconds to go had to decide to shoot the gap or bail out. They went for it. Wrong decision. Over early. Well, yeah, and here we go. This is the moment I talked about coming in left of screen. The French, they have the right of way. Switzerland don't think they'll get clear ahead. So at the last minute, Seb, look at this. They're bow to bow. <laughs> wow, what judgment by Seb Schneider on the, on the wheel there. 
Nathan Outridge running across the back, but they lined up for the gate, and it was that last decision to dip behind the French that turned a tight moment into a race-winning moment. It was the moment of the race for me there. In the background, the French dropped back to third, and their woes weren't to end there as France slipped back to fourth on the next leg. But what a move by Seb. So good to see another winner in Sail GP. That now means all nine teams have won a race at some stage. And he did do it the hard way, handed up in a bit of a match race against the New Zealand crew. And this New Zealand crew, well, they've won a few big match races in their time, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, no, no thing for the Swiss to not be proud about. Absolutely fantastic. And Denmark, Nikolai Sehested, perhaps the silent assassin here in Singapore. We've not talked about him a lot, but Denmark sit just one point from the lead after three races in Singapore. So it's welcome to the show, Sebastian Snyder and Switzerland Sail GP as they pick up the victory. Take a look now, after three races, it has tightened up considerably. Australia still out in front, but their lead now just one point. New Zealand sits at second, tied with Denmark. And then Great Britain, Switzerland, the USA, and Canada on the outside looking in. Only the top three will compete in the final race of the day. So this next race is going to be huge. Stevie, no opportunity for mistakes because you're going to have to nail the start and you're going to have to be spot on with these shifting conditions. Well, Seb, uh, what an incredible race that was. First race win for your team. How are you feeling down there on board? Uh, hi, Stevie. Yeah, we're feeling great. It's uh, finally, uh, we've been waiting for that, that one for a time. But uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the next race and hopefully make our weekend as long as possible. And uh, now on that final downwind, when you turned and started aiming straight at the French, you scared me. How were you feeling on the boat at that moment? Yeah, we were not quite sure what the French uh, were trying to do. We thought they were going for a jibe, but uh, they probably thought we were a bit too fast for that. So uh, yeah, opened up the left turn nicely for us. And then after that, we, we sailed a clean race. Nathan was uh, giving some good calls on New Zealand and uh, it was a nice last up win to the finish. Uh, and what, is it, what does this mean for the team, for your confidence? I mean, as we, we were saying in commentary, you had to hold off New Zealand, one of the best match racing teams in the world. You did hold them off. What does that mean for your team? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we, we all knew that was doable. Uh, I guess it's just a step for us to win our first race. And uh, I guess the next step is to make it into the podium race. So, yeah, we're going to do our best. Uh, work as we can for the next race and just uh, focus on a nice start which has been working pretty well in that race so yeah just try to do the same again and uh, yeah it's a good milestone for the team brilliant well it's great to see i can see in the right hand side some big clouds H how are you feeling about the weather for the next 10 minutes are you confident a good wind yeah yeah i think this is going to hold on for a little while still so it's been great that these clouds came because there's not much wind before that and uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean, these are the perfect conditions for F50 flat water, 10, 15 knots, and uh, yeah, cannot ask for any better. Well, Seb, I'm going to let you get back to the chat with the coach. Brilliant race. You are close to a place in the final, so one more good race and it's all on, but I'll let your coach tell you that. Thanks for joining us, mate. And we're gonna take a quick look here at the foiling efficiency of the top speeds. Obviously, it's a really tricky day out there for the teams to get up on the foils and get ripping. And there's, as we mentioned before, a big decision between whether you push to get up on the foils or whether you sail a shorter distance and keep one hull in the water. The Swiss seem to get the balance right. They flew for about 82% of the time and fairly stable when they're up on the foils at 77% stability. The Kiwis and the Danish were flying a lot more of the time, sailing at 93% for the Danish team. So up on the foils more, higher speeds, but sailing more distance, which today was not the answer for the race win. So once again, it is Switzerland that gets the win in race number three. New Zealand finishing in second place. Denmark finishing in third. And the teams that needed the points the most unable to come through as France misses out. Great Britain misses out. They finish in fifth place. And Australia way down on the board. Seventh, one spot ahead of the USA and Canada finishing in ninth. We're just getting started here. Much more race number two on Sunday still to come as we continue on with the beautiful Singapore Sail Grand Prix.
And next, a preview of our documentary series, Racing on the Edge, where we catch up with Sail GP athletes focusing on mental health. If someone said to me the day before the Olympics, like, we'll give you a silver medal right now, would you take it? I would say, no way, not a chance. And then I finished 22nd. I remember one of our coaches, Victor Kovalenko, he's known as the medal maker, came to me and said, I know you don't believe this, but the amount this hurt you is the amount you're gonna gain in the future. We won the World Cup one year before in Japan, and, and we come back from the Olympics with a eighth position. That was not what I was expecting. We had still won a silver medal, and that really felt like we'd lost the gold medal. And I think if your own identity is really attached to winning, you know, you have that risk then of uh, when you're not winning, who are you? Then you can be uh, free floating pretty quickly and not understand where you fit in this world. I think to be a really good competitor in sport and to be successful, and when I say successful, you know, winning gold medals, winning any competition you go to, that part is all about your mental well-being. I think sport has made some good changes in the right direction over the last few years or five years where there is more support structures around um, top athletes because I think it's really important, it's really important to be around your friends, your teammates, to have that balance in life where you can go 100% for your support, but also know there's a, there's a bigger picture to it as well. In 2012, I came back with all the weight of the world on my shoulders and turned it around and won a gold medal. And um, that journey, nothing will compete. And the amount I, I grew up as a person, as a man, um, during that time, will uh, I'll remember that forever. This is an ever-changing race course on the Singapore Strait and it all has to do with the clouds. If you see those dark low clouds as they approach, they will bring wind and pull the wind direction towards it. So it's really about positioning yourself best to capitalise on a good angle up the course and find better pressure. No two laps will be the same, although teams will have to learn throughout the day, I think that they need to keep their eyes on the sky and be super flexible with their strategy. The good news is there is still plenty of pressure out here and the boats are falling around as they prepare for the second race of today. If it was me, I think the same strategy that worked in the last lap of the last race will work this time, but as I said, need to be super flexible out here. If anything, I would say we've had the best pressure so far today coming now, so it should be a very exciting reach to Mark 1. Lots of boat-on-boat -boat situations also happening out here, so intensity is high, and I think those drivers are really relying on their strategists to navigate throughout the course, not only with the wind, but against other boats. There's some exciting news coming because in the next Sail GP event we should have some perfect conditions for racing as we head to Sydney Harbour. Let's hear what Tom had to say ahead of his home event. Can't wait to get back to Sydney Harbour. Really excited. Uh, we're in good shape so far in the season overall. Um, hopefully we head there with a bit of confidence after Singapore, but it's our favourite event of the year and uh, talking to the other teams, it's one of their favourite events for sure. Uh, Sydney Harbour, it's a natural amphitheatre. It's made for Sail GP type racing. Really, you can expect anything uh, in Sydney. Uh, generally, we have good solid winds and it's pretty reliable. Uh, generally, that time of year, we have sun. Uh, so fingers crossed we get both those things. And the atmosphere on Shark Island and on the spectator boats watching the racing is uh, electric, as so I've been told. One day, maybe I'll get to watch. One of the absolute great sailing venues as we look forward to that event coming up February 18th and 19th, the KPMG Australia Sail Grand Prix. Take a look now at the results after three races, two yesterday, one today. One more fleet race to go, guys, and then it's the final. And Emily, this is where you earn your money. Crack out that abacus because it looks like almost <laughs> everyone is still able or capable of making the final. I'd say the big focus is on that top five. GBR and Switzerland really aren't far off of making that top three. Essentially, all they need to do is beat one of those top three teams by two positions, which when there's three boats, it's easily doable, especially in the conditions we've got today.
Well, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I still think there's hope for the uh, Canadian and US fans, but for, for France and the USA, really, this is a big, big moment in their season. If France have been looking so good, if they end up in eighth out of this event, it's going to draw them right back into that fight to have a hope of making the grand final. And for Jimmy Spitter and USA to have any hope of making the final in San Francisco, I think already at this stage, yeah. two, three events from the end of the season, this is the big, big pressure race on them. They're going to need to win. They're going to need to somehow magic their way into that final. Well, the fans cooling off on a balmy day here in Singapore. What a great sight as we come up on two and a half minutes to go before the final fleet race here at the Singapore Sail Grand Prix here in season three. This is event number eight and Sail GP's first foray into Southeast Asia. Dark clouds on the horizon, but Lisa Darman is telling us the wind is filling in nicely, and this is all to play for. Emily, you talked about it with 2.15 to go. There's six teams really in play. Uh, Australia looks the best, obviously, but we saw them have an absolute terrible start to the last race. This thing could go topsy-turvy. Look at the USA. What if they stick it like they did yesterday and get a, a great start in race number two and get the win? Then the points go crazy and you're hard at work. <laughs> exactly. The points do go crazy, but it would require one of those top three right. teams to really have a shocker in order for them to get to the final. Yeah, I think for the Danish, you know, they, they've been so consistent through the season, but not quite consistently good enough. However, they've made two finals. What a time it would be to make another final. Katya at the back, strategist, did a great job on that final upwind. Bronze medalist from the Rio Olympics, which was a pretty sort of tropical, shifty kind of Olympic Games. And maybe this is the day where her skill base can really come in. Under 90 seconds to go before this final fleet race. The course for race four is seven legs. The axis is 185. Wind is approximately 16 kilometers per hour. So seven legs this time, Stevie. So they bump it up just a little bit more. So they're obviously confident there's enough wind to race that long a race without having to abandon it. As soon as these F50s are foiling, they get around it so coarse so quickly that, yeah, we've got some laps needed. So the wind holding at 14 kilometers an hour across the course, and now it is go time. Seven legs to race here in race number four. Positioning in the start box is going to be huge. That's the voice of the uh, New Zealand crew we can hear in the background. Interesting, New Zealand at completely the opposite end of the line to they were in the first race. A lot of the fleet seems to have switched around. We're seeing how crucial the start is. How will the trues line up here? Denmark leading the fleet back. Oh, they look like they're in a tricky position up here. That's an odd move by the Danish boat. Jimmy Spittle needs a big start. He leads the fleet back on board the USA. New Zealand find a gap. Australia in the middle of the line as well. The two main protagonists are right in the middle of the line. USA lined up for that pole position with 10 seconds to go. And Canada and Great Britain, they're on a late charge. Look for this line to turn white. Denmark could be good here. Who's going to be behind the line? Oh, I think they're over. This is the umpires. Oh, he had, had to push it. Starter GBR. Had to push it. That's going to be costly. I don't see a way back from here. But Sehested out of the top of the line. He's got the fastest angle to mark one. And look at him go on board Denmark. So at mark number one, the final fleet race here at the Singapore Sail Grand Prix, and it is the Danes out in front that will lead them on to gate number two. Brilliant start by the Danish, 50 kilometers an hour at the gun, leaving the others behind in the dust there. Go. Good news for Denmark, good news for Australia, and good news for New Zealand, but what a disaster for Great Britain and for the United States. I mean, they're way out the back. They're not even in the shot at the moment. And we know how important your position at gate two can be. Switzerland, they had their Weetabix this morning because they've come out of the blocks and they're on fire. Top speeds there at the moment, 45 kilometers an hour for the Danish Swiss neck and neck with them. Oz has been a little bit slower at the moment. Let's see if they can build up that pace. If there is any good news or a shining light for Great Britain and the USA, it's all about the seven legs. Here we go. New Zealand, oh, it's Denmark. We're back on board with Denmark. Let's watch them round the gate. Oh. 
Australia split from New Zealand there. What a move by Burling again. He's fast down that leg, but it's Australia's tight here. French have the way on the inside. Canada around the outside. Watch out as we come round the mark now, because France are going to need to keep out of the way. Oh, wow, that didn't sound good. Apologies to French viewers. That was a bit of industrial French language rounding the mark there. And Great Britain, well, he's overtaken a few places, Ben Ainsley, but he's got a lot of work to do if he hopes to make the final. Like three of seven, this is the final fleet race, and then the top three teams will battle it out in the final. It's Denmark, Switzerland, Australia, New Zealand right now, the top four. And currently, as it stands, this would seen the Danish, Australians, and Kiwis through to the final, but the Swiss are not far behind. If they can get one more point, they might be able to knock the Kiwis off of that. And Todd, if we have a look here, the wind is definitely a little bit lighter here. It's very, very shifty because at the moment, Denmark have made a big gain over Australia and France and Denmark and Switzerland. They're sailing up those ladder lines. We can see the arrows pointing in the direction of the next gate. For Denmark, wow, they look pretty good at the moment. Can Switzerland overtake the Danes and give themselves a shot at the final? And Switzerland is certainly cheering on Great Britain to pass the Kiwis, and that would push them into that third position right now. Swiss talking, that's the strategist talking to Seb Schneider, Nathan Altridge the strategist, he's cool in the plays, but the Swiss team, they're able to deliver them today, really good to see, as we see the Danes now foiling away, they look fast on board this Danish boat, and they need to be. I love how Nathan Altridge says, don't kill the speed. Just listening in on board the Danes at the moment. Okay, so there we go. Right. Sir Hestead and Tom Johnson, the wing trim, are discussing whether or not they think they can make the next gate. I like right turn for Ben Reese. If we can make one in. Well, they, they've set up for that. He wants to now be able to continue straight and just turn right. But we heard from Tom Johnson during the manoeuvre that he wasn't <laughs> sure if that was going to be possible. I don't think they'll mind too much at the moment. They just want to keep fast. Look at that. 50 metres ahead on those ladder lines. New Zealand turn. They have the right of way. Switzerland have to respond. And they're sailing parallel to that yellow ley line. That means New Zealand and Switzerland should make the next gate with no more manoeuvres. But... For Denmark, they're going to have to match one more turn, and it will be a left turn for Denmark. Not the best manoeuvre by the Swiss there. They came off the foil, slowed down a bit too much with that panicked manoeuvre in response. But the real mover right now, if we look at the top left graphic, the British have moved up to fifth position, so they've found some braise and working their way up the fleet as well. The bad news for the Swiss, though, New Zealand sits in second place, and they need them to drop back at least one or two positions if they want any shot at making the final. It's Denmark, Switzerland, New Zealand, Australia, great Britain the top five. Big down, big down. So it's through it's gate number three as the F-50 is rounding the gate presented by Near. I think the bad news for everyone chasing that top three is that three of the, uh, the top three are all in the top four. Tom Slingsby turns right, back of the pack though, eighth place, USA, they're picking up cheap penalties, a boundary penalty a minute ago. As we see there, Great Britain, Ben Ainsley, well, he's chasing them down. He wants a shot at the final. It's going to be so tight. Denmark, New Zealand, Australia and Great Britain are all within a point of each other. And the Swiss, they're going to need some mistakes from the other teams to have any hope of the final. how tricky it is. There's a lot of talk about ley lines, boundaries, really pushing to try and get to the mark in as few maneuvers as possible. And here's why. We've got the Danish Kiwis and Australians currently making the final and the Swiss just out of reach of it. Well, the Swiss need some mistakes, unfortunately, but look at this. Danes look smooth at the moment. Voice of Katya saying the wind's lighter. It's definitely lighter as you get down towards the shore here in Singapore. Less wind. Keeping the fans in the adrenaline lounge a bit warmer, I'd imagine, Todd, but it's not helping the sailors. They're having to do a lot of extra maneuvers when they get down to this end of the course. We actually got time to tack in 
to bend and do yeah. whatever they go back. Just do a normal race routing. Coming this very clear pressure this way, so I'm pretty yeah. happy. Especially if they follow. Turning up in five. They follow. In three, two, one. Turning up here. Such a good communication yeah. link on board that Danish boat. Really clear Angle. communication. Switzerland followed, but New Zealand, yeah, Katya told us. New Zealand split, Australia look like they're going to go straight. Big tactical call here from Burling on board New Zealand. What's he seen? What's Liv Mackay seen? Have they found more wind on that side? Well, we're going to find out in a couple of minutes. But New Zealand can't afford to lose any places or their place in the final will be in jeopardy. So as we go on to leg five of seven here in the final fleet race, race number four, it's Denmark, Switzerland, New Zealand, Australia, and Great Britain, the top five, and points still to play for. Wow, Great Britain have turned back into traffic. They don't have right of way here. They've got to keep clear of all those other boats. What an aggressive move by Hainsley, but it's going to be slow. Oh. Oh, excuse me, pardon for the language on board there. Obviously, that manoeuvre, the tension, boats aiming straight at you, closing speed of 60 kilometres an hour or something like that is tense. And all the boats are now heading to the same side of the course as New Zealand as the USA. Well, look at that, 11 kilometres an hour. But good breeze right now for the Kiwis on the right-hand side of the course, 18, 19 kilometres an hour of the breeze, while with the Swiss on the left side of the course, we've seen in less, 13, 14 kilometres an hour. So this could be the chance to the Kiwis to catch up. Up. up and floating are the Kiwis. They currently sit in third place. That's enough to secure a spot at the final. It's Denmark, Switzerland, New Zealand, Australia, and France, top five. Well, if we look at the top of the screen as well, the wind's flicking between 15 and 20 kilometers an hour. When it's 15, they can't do a maneuver and stay on the foils. If you can do it in 20, then you can. Denmark, nice game. Slight right trend from here. Slight right trend. That's the voice of coach Ray Davis. That's a pretty good voice to have in your ear there. Talking about the wind rotating to the right. So that means they can almost sail straight up the course. And that's why New Zealand like that side of the course. But Denmark, they look like they might make it to the next gate with no more maneuvers. And we've got breaking news. The race has been shortened now. It's down to the last gate. Leg five of five is what they are on. And the next gate will be the finish line. So it'll either be Denmark and New Zealand taking the win. Denmark looks good here, Todd. Just 100 metres to go to book their place in the final. Potentially one more turn for New Zealand. Well, and it's going to be Denmark that's going to cross the line as they pick up the win here in race number four to back up the third place they got in race number three. And that will put the Danish team in that final. Switzerland. What a day for the Swiss, Todd. A first and a second. Yep. Not going to be enough to make the final as it stands at the moment with New Zealand coming across the line in third. They look set for an easy third on board New Zealand. What a comeback from Berling. We thought two days ago that four-point penalty was just almost a schoolboy error. They've made up for it and then some. Great comeback by New Zealand and Australia's fourth place. I think that'll get them to the final, Emily. Yep, so our final lists will be the Danish, the Kiwis and the Australians. That is huge for the season overall. What a comeback yeah, by Denmark and New Zealand today to get themselves into the final. That keeps their chance of the grand final in San Francisco alive. First time we try that coming in late. That's so Great Britain just comes across the line in fourth place. France finishes in sixth. Not their best performance here in Singapore. Obviously a spot they're going to want to forget. That was the voice of Ben. He was absolutely gutted. French are going to be gutted as well. Not a good weekend for them. The season overalls are going to go haywire from here, Todd. Yep. But most importantly, we need to find a winner in Singapore. And for Denmark, New Zealand and Australia, it's just about to get real serious. So Canada will come across the line in seventh place to back up the ninth they got to start the day. So they will not be in the top three. There's a lot of sighing out there on the water at the minute. Tough day. Yeah. 
Tough, tough day for the US, for Canada, USA and Spain. Wow, there's some serious questions to be asked by those teams now. Could be season over for the USA and for Spain. Back to the drawing book for me. I mean, yeah, look back at the start, Stevie, and for the USA and Jimmy Spithill, there are two starts where they were off by, what, less than two meters, and that made all the difference. Yeah, I mean, you know, but... Yeah, yep. <laughs> it's top-level sport, isn't it? Fine margins, is, there's not a lot in it. Both of them, you would argue, they looked early at 40 seconds, though. So, yes, they were over in the last split second, but 40 seconds out, it already looked a bit tight. Perhaps it needed a change of plan at that stage, but, you know, well, anyway, this about, that's what matters, the race yep. to the final. The final is set. It is Denmark, the top points getter on 31, and New Zealand and Australia tie in 29. Can't say enough to Stevie's point. New Zealand, remember, started off four points behind, and they make it up, and they get enough points to finish in the top three. So the fans were in for a treat. We weren't sure if we were going to get all three races in today. Mother Nature obliged, and we are all now set for the finals. We go back to the look at race number four start. Well, yeah, the key moment. And for uh, for Denmark, what a start at the top of the line. Absolutely perfect from Sehested. But look, left-hand side, middle of our screen now, Great Britain. We heard at the finish Ben Ainsley apologizing, tried the late charge and just couldn't get there. And it was an absolute disaster. And we've seen the big three, Denmark, New Zealand and Australia. All three of them nailed that start under pressure. And it's delivering under pressure that counts, Todd. As you said, a few meters here or there can make all the difference. But that's what top level sport's all about. And as we get to gate two, we can see once again, Denmark, they were out in front. Eyes on stalks for Katja at the back of the boat there. But she did a fantastic job of finding the breeze around the course. Switzerland, well, the best ever day in Sail GP so far. They must gonna leave this event absolutely buzzing. But, you know, it's about the final. I can't wait. It's great that we've got Breeze here. What a spectacle we've got here in Singapore today. But it's just about to get really, really serious. Well, Nikolai, uh, what a performance that, by your again. team oh, on the water uh, out there today. Some comeback. How nervous were you feeling before that last start? Uh, not too nervous, probably. Yeah, no, I felt pretty good. We're, we're sailing the boat well, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great team we have here. So uh, it's a, you're pretty comfortable when you have a good team, but obviously it's super high level out here. So you also know that the difference between the first and the last is uh, it's not big out here. No, there's really not a lot in it, but you've, you've found your way back to a final. It's been a, it's been a little while since we saw you in the final. We're starting to worry about you, but, uh, but good to see you back. What do you think is going to be the key to getting a good performance in the final here? Oh, it's obviously two teams who are racing with very good uh, final experience and, and, and also in these boats. So uh, the key is to be honest to stay out of too many infights because if there's two boats in fighting, then the third one will get a free free pass. So uh, I think we learned the lessons in the final in, uh, in Copenhagen that the, no need to infight with the Kiwis, just to sail clean and stay out of trouble. Yeah, that's certainly the case. And we can see some very big clouds on our cameras around. How changeable are the conditions out there? Are you, are you kind of confident of what to expect or are we re re being ready for anything? Oh, you got to be ready for everything out here at the moment. These, these clouds is, is pulling the, the breeze right and, and also actually increasing it a bit. So it should be good conditions for the final. Uh, yeah, it should be good. Nikolai, good conditions for the final were the exact words I wanted you to say. Uh, great performance, good luck in the race, and uh, hopefully we'll be speaking to you afterwards. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> So from Nikolai Sehested and Denmark, we bounce over to New Zealand, Peter Burling, and they are coming into the final, joining Australia and Denmark. Peter, how confident were you coming into this second day of racing, already down the four points to start things off, that you could get enough to get into the final? Yeah, we've been, um, I feel like we've been sailing really well as a group and yeah, put together a couple of solid races yesterday. Obviously, we weren't heavy with the, uh, the last one, but um, yeah, to come out this morning, uh, She's got two good scores on the board and now be fighting for in the final something is uh, exactly what we came here to do. Obviously with the penalty points is using for us as a group. On a tight course like this with the tricky conditions, how much are you leaning on Blair Took and Liv Mackay to kind of get you around the course and put you in the right spot? Yeah, well, we lean on the, uh, the whole group to be honest. Um, you know, Joshy, Louis and Marcus are providing a fair bit of power to, to keep the thing going. and. That's a pretty dynamic day, like you say. You know, the rain's obviously not too far away on the far side. That's building a 
holding this breeze in and kind of keeps flicking it around. So it's, um, you know, hopefully it holds out for this last race. Pete, appreciate your time. Good luck in the final. So Peter Burley, New Zealand, Tom Slingsby, Australia, and Nikolai Sehested and Denmark. They are on for the final. The final three teams that will battle it out for the title of Singapore Sail Grand Prix. And I'll tell you what, you can make a case, Stevie, for any one of them. Right now, Denmark seems to have the most momentum. Denmark's fast, but, oh, man, Tom Slingsby just loves getting to these finals in third place, doesn't he? <laughs> it's almost like then there's no pressure on him, and off he goes. I think, I think I've got to say, yeah, all three of them have sailed really, really well this weekend. Part of me, I don't know we're allowed to be biased. I quite like the Danish to win. Nikolai and, and the, the crew, they've sailed fantastically this afternoon. We've yet to see them win one of these. This is their third final, third time lucky. What do you reckon? They were robbed of it in Plymouth. So I fingers crossed it for these guys. They really deserve it and it's their time to shine. That's going to be a great story, whoever wins. Denmark, the comeback kids, as they get themselves into the final. New Zealand down on points to start off this regatta, and they are into the final. And, of course, Tom Slingsby, we know what kind of magic he can work. So that's what's all to play for. When we return back to Singapore, it is the Singapore Sail Grand Prix, the final race. This is event eight of season number three, as Sail GP makes their first foray into Southeast Asia. And by the looks on the face of the fans, they look very happy that Sail GP has come to their shores. As the boats make their way in that are not participating in the final, we take a deep breath, we reset, and then it is all on. And remember, these are the teams that will be battling for 10, 9, and 8 points, which will go towards the overall standings. Australia, the two-time reigning and defending champions, they lead it all with 60 points, just holding off New Zealand by 9. We'll have the big final when we return to Singapore. At Sail GP, competition on the water is only half the story. For the first time ever in sport, we have a second podium dedicated to the planet, the Impact League. The league is a competition running alongside the championship that tracks the positive actions our teams make to reduce their overall carbon footprint and help accelerate inclusivity in sailing. Teams are given points based on their positive actions. Points are awarded for reducing waste, innovating to find cleaner sources of energy, choosing plant-based meals, 
using their platform to encourage fans to do the same, culminating in the Impact League champions crowned alongside the season champion, with the prize money going to the team's purpose partner. We believe in the power of sport for good. Sport can lead by example by taking action and inspiring others to make simple changes in their daily lives for a better planet. Every action makes an impact. Well, the teams have been scoring points on the Impact League throughout the season at every sale GP stop. With different initiatives and activities that help make a positive impact on the planet, the teams have been active on social platforms, scoring points for the Impact League by showcasing what they've been up to in the last race. And before we get to the final race on the water, we want to update you on the Impact League. It is Canada that has moved into first place. Two points clear of New Zealand, who has been dominant over the last few seasons. Canada get it done for Ocean Wise, and of course, New Zealand getting it done for Live Ocean. And the Wii Foundation for Switzerland as the most improved team, of course, Sail GP powered by nature. And the compound is being pr primarily powered by solar power here in Singapore. Well, here we go, and these are the three drivers in the final, and probably the man that needs no introduction, Tom Slingsby, the wing winningest man in Sail GP, the driver, well, the man that tends to win these finals, but Pete Burling, perhaps his nemesis this season, and the Kiwis, well, they've been a threat, they're back in the final, they started with a bit of a bandage on their leg, but they've got themselves in the final, and now is it third time, luckily, Nikolai Sehested. They've sailed superb out there today. He's been such a good offshore sailor in his time that these tricky cloud-driven conditions could be right up his street. As we see the stats now there, Tom Slingsby, look at that. Sail GP final races won 11 from 15. He doesn't miss a lot, miss a lot of those Olympic gold medals, more world championships than you could fit in your average medal cabinet. He's done it all. That is for sure, as has this man, Peter Burling. Two America's Cups from two, nine world championships, three Olympic medals, and he started winning races in Sail GP. Two of three finals, knows how to get it done. And this feels like an absolute dry run of what I think could be two of the finalists in San Francisco. But ahead of them, of course, is two more events in Sydney and then in Christchurch. And it's opportunity knocks for this final driver. Here, Nikolai Sehested and the Danish team. They had to perform here in Singapore. They have. They've not won a Sail GP final race just yet, but he's won a lot of other big events. Round the world, yachtsman. Volvo Ocean Race starts today. Can Nikolai Sehested make it third time lucky for Denmark? Looking forward to seeing what the bees brings us out there. And Denmark really trying to get themselves into a top three position overall. They're currently sitting on 42 points, 18 points back of Australia over the top at 60. Well, look at the breeze there, Todd. There's good breeze out there at the moment, and there's rain on the water. That could bring some changes. The course for the final race is seven legs. The axis is one, nine, three. Three, one, and two. So Melanie Roberts, the race manager, letting us know there are seven legs, which means there's plenty of wind. That means lots of falling and a wide open track. Big, big shift in the wind, though, Todd. Big, big shift. Oh, it's a huge chain. You see rain on the camera. That means the wind will have shifted direction. It's rotated right. Bear in mind, these are the 29-meter wings. They were not designed for this much breeze. It's going to be pretty scary on board those F-50s right now. And the grinders, they got a lot of wing to pull in. And the wind pushing near 24 kilometers an hour. So to Stevie's point, the wind has shifted. The rain has come, and it is all on. So Stevie. How is that going to change the way you race this, knowing that you have that huge wing out there? I think that they're going to have to still be sending it hard. There's no danger of that. But look, pole position, right-hand side of our screen, the bottom end of the line. New Zealand are lined up best for that. That's the way you want to be in this right-hand shift. It's going to be hard to get your timing right to the start. New Zealand will have space. Australia and Denmark are going to be off the wrong end of the line. It's advantage New Zealand with seven seconds to go. How's your timing, Peter Burling? At the pole position, watch for the line to turn. Why? Perfect start by all three boats. Sehested blasts out the middle of the line, but it should be New Zealand hanging on on the inside, although it's going to be an absolute sprint into Mark 1. Can Sehested push hard enough to get over the top? 
65 kilometers an hour of boat speed there for the Kiwis and the Danish team. The Australians a click slower. Gonna have to set up. It's gonna need a bit of a dip. It's gonna need to be a turn right at this mark, I imagine, Todd. Watch for the boats to set up. The winds turn so much, they're gonna be able to sail straight down the course. There you go, New Zealand. They read it first, they spin. Possibly lined up for gate two already. Denmark follows suit. Is that the race? 62 meters ahead, and Denmark and New Zealand are both pointing straight at gate two. Advantage Burling and crew. 33 kilometers an hour of breeze here. That is more wind than we have ever sailed with with the 29 meter wings. Normally they max out at 18 kilometers an hour. So a lot of learning going on here as they figure out how to depower these wings. A lot of learning at high speed. Look at the wind across the course now bumping over 30 kilometers an hour. It is New Zealand at gate number two, then the Danes and then Australia. Don't count out Tom Slingsby just yet. We've seen this Stevie playbook before. We have, but with the wind turning so far right, they're going to be able to turn fairly soon and sail straight up those laps. There you go, Slingsby. That was the play. He needed to... Oh, they've missed the manoeuvre. They've missed it. Bad, bad manoeuvre on board Australia. That's metres out the window. Perfection from Denmark through the turn. Perfection from New Zealand, and that's going to be costly for Australia, and it's now a sprint up the course. Good recovery by the Australians. New Zealand out in front, then Denmark, then Australia. Good recovery, but that's a lot of distance lost very quickly. Still seeing 25 kilometers an hour of pressure out there. Apparent wind speed is up to 70 kilometers an hour. That's huge for the 29 meter wings. One, Okay, so here and there, they want to do two more turns and then look to turn left at the top of the course. They're trying to plan ahead as best they can, but Denmark, they're not going anywhere. We're on board them now, and look how close New Zealand are. Yep. All the boats are looking for a left turn here, so we can expect two more manoeuvres from all the crews. Denmark first to spin. Look how close they are. New Zealand match, and we see the gate to the left-hand side here. It's all going to be about accuracy of manoeuvres. It was a better manoeuvre by New Zealand that time. Advantage Burling and crew. One more turn to go before they get to gate number three. This is leg three of seven. This is the final. New Zealand, Denmark, and Australia going one, two, and three. The Aussies still trying to recover from that bad maneuver as they came around gate number two. But the Kiwis look to be the smoothest, and don't count out Denmark. And Nikolai Sehested, their maneuvers, Stevie, have been spot on. Well, they're keeping New Zealand honest, but the last two maneuvers, New Zealand are tidied up. And let's watch this bear away. Big acceleration, big danger coming. Made it look like a cakewalk, didn't it? Nothing. Oh, there you go. That shows just how hard it is, and that's some meters out the water there. Water over the boat, slowed down. Needs a reset. So on to leg four of seven. Halfway point in the race here, and that's a big advantage. Look, 100 metres ahead. It was nearly a 70-metre gain on that last leg for New Zealand. That's ominous for the rest of these crews. Natasha Bryan pointing Tom Slingsby's eye to the left side of the course as they head back down. Look at the head-to-head -head here, 100% fly time currently for the Kiwi teams, dominating over the others, 53 kilometers an hour average speed, while the Aussies are lacking behind a little bit, of only 50k an hour and 93% fly time, struggling with that new crew configuration. And as we go down on the water, Lisa Darman, and what are you seeing in your crystal ball and where would you go if you were sailing? Well, that dark cloud is sitting right over the middle of the course, so I'm expecting a left turn by the Kiwis and everyone else and an early tack. It's, it's, it's changing every minute out here, but I think the Kiwis, if they stay between the other competitors and the mark, they should be OK. It's not changing that quickly out here. Interesting. So New Zealand continues to lead. They're on to leg five of seven. Time is running out for Tom Slingsby to try to pull another miracle out. And Denmark, as Stevie said, keeping the Kiwis honest. I think we'll get the tank. Oh, 
Well, it's really, really tight. 12 seconds is a good lead at this stage. Slings be aggressive, as we'd expect. First to spin away, gets them heading on the upwind leg. He's got to try and hope for a mistake from the other crews, though, at this stage. And Denmark, well, they're pushing wide. We're, we're so far behind, we just got to do a clean lap. And we just got to sail our numbers and take it again, right? Yeah, well, I think Tom's pretty right there. They've just got to try and get the boat smooth, try and find that famous Australian rhythm here. Not a great position with the Kiwis. We heard them sailing to their numbers was the phrase. And what they're doing there is they're looking at their screen, looking at their target speeds and really focusing on pushing the boat as fast as possible and not worrying about what the boats around them are sailing in. And I think... That's a very true for New Zealand as well as the Australian boat. There's a big lead at this point, 115 metres. Denmark's keeping them on a bit of a string. It's not extended for the last two legs, but Pete Burling and the New Zealand crew are starting to sail their own race rather than worry about the boats behind. And that is when this New Zealand crew is at their most dangerous. On leg five of seven, let's put this into context. New Zealand came into this regatta before it even started down four points because of contact with the USA in practice. And here they are, 100 meters clear of Denmark in second place on their way to a possible win. Oh, context is unbelievable, Todd. I mean, uh, uh, there's so much pressure. They only had four races to make those points up as well. But don't you wait. Nikolai Sehested won't be giving up just yet. And as Lisa said, if that rain cloud's right overhead, there's every chance the breeze could still yet turn off. Anything could happen, so they're going to need to stay fast. But they are. Look at the speed. They've got ride height on the left-hand side. They're not flying the boat super high out of the water, but they are safe. As they approach the near gate at gate number five, that's the first fan-owned sail GP team built on near, representing Caribbean and Bermuda open subscriptions this week. There's an opportunity for all fans to become a team owner. Very calm on board New Zealand, Stevie. This is a walk in the park. Yeah, Liv Mackay just sounded pretty cool, and Pete saying, let's just go to boundary. Let's keep it simple. The voice of Katia is getting lighter. That could be a sign that we're about to get a bit of a change. Tom Slingsby needs a big change on the course here. Bit of a dejected voice of Tom Slingsby there, but he's right to follow at this stage. We've still got time left should things change. He's got to keep doing the right things. Seventy-seven 77.1 kilometers an hour top speed so far for this race. It's done by the Kiwis. That's quite impressive for a 29-meter yeah. wing with so much drag. There's so much surface area of this thing. It should be slowing them down in these conditions. And who would have thought they'd be hitting those speeds on Friday when we were looking at the forecast? And here they are. And look at the distance. Over 250 meters, New Zealand way out in front. Like six of seven, one more leg, and the Kiwis will take it all. Well, there's not far to go now, Todd. They've just got to spin it round. Pete said it wasn't easy to get straight to the finish, but they're right in front of the fans, and I think they're going to have done it here. There's the finish line. So despite being down four points to start the regatta, it is New Zealand Sail GP that comes to Singapore and walks away with a victory. They dug a hole early and they came right out of it to the top of the podium. Denmark will finish in second place. Australia will take third. Those are still great points for the overall leaders. Huge, huge, huge result for Denmark. We can't underestimate how brilliant a result that is for Sehested and his crew. That's exactly, go again in Sydney, quite right. But that's a brilliant result. That keeps them right in the hunt to make the grand final. And well, he's pretty relentless. Tom Slingsby in Australia. They lost one of their key, key players in Carl Langford, Ed Powers. Super subs stepped in and well, yeah, Tom sounded a bit dejected in the race, but to pull out a third when yep. you're bringing in your subs, that's pretty ominous for the other teams. And they're heading to their home waters. Reminder, February 18th and 19th, it's the KPMG Australia Sail Grand Prix. Tom Slingsby very keen to get back to Sydney Harbour.
we're going to slow it down a little here and think a little more about what's going on in these pre-starts. Now, each team has a screen on board that shows them the optimum position on the start line, the point on the line that will get them to mark one first. Now, we know the Kiwis use this a lot. And here, it's showing them where that blue highlighted spot is. That is where you want to be on the line. So the Kiwis have set up low, have right. aimed Thanks, straight Jenny. to that position, while the Danish and Australians are closer yeah, to this nice. end of the screen. The Kiwis nail the spot perfectly, while the Australians are 170 meters away from optimum. Well, and here we go, key moment. Well, for New Zealand, it probably was that start, but they rounded up here. It was pretty tight at gate two, and Australia was still very much in the hunt as they turned up round there. But we can see a slip by Tash Bryant. Ed Powis got stuck. He's late into the turn, and they miss the wing. The wing sheet flaps. The boat heels over and gets slow. And for Australia, that poor manoeuvre is so uncharacteristic of that Australian team. Effectively put them out of the race. Then we're in a two-boat race, I think, by this stage. It came down to the manoeuvres, perhaps not perfect by New Zealand at the beginning, but by this stage of that first upwind leg, they were perfect. Kilometre an hour faster through the middle of that manoeuvre, and each manoeuvre from here on in, New Zealand just kept a little bit cleaner than the Danes. 55 metres at this stage, quite soon opened out to over 100 when the Danes just dipped the boat in the water. And then by the finish, well, look at that. Almost in a leg of their own. They were certainly in a league of their own when they got to the finish. And it's been a brilliant performance. Quite incredible comeback by this New Zealand crew. And uh, well, they're going home pretty happy. Some quick numbers for you here, showing why optimum position on the line it was king today. So the Danish were the closest to the line at the gun at six meters off. The Australians were the fastest at the gun, but the Kiwis were in the correct position and that got them to mark one first. Then through their brilliant sailing skills and sailing fast the whole way around, they held that right up until the finish. So let's take a look at the scoreboard after eight events now complete. It is still Australia out in front as they head to home waters for the next event, of course, coming on February 18th and 19th. That's the KPMG Australia Sail Grand Prix. But the lead is shrinked just a little bit as New Zealand moves on to 59 points. The Australians on 68. Great Britain now in third, just one point clear of France who fall out of the top three. Remember, top three teams want to be there when they get to San Francisco, and that's the fight for the grand final. Denmark moves up. They're now in fifth place, two points behind France in fourth. Canada sitting there in sixth in the United States, really not the game they were looking for. They were looking for a bigger performance here. They sit in seventh place. Well, what a showing is Sail GP makes their first foray into Southeast Asia for event number eight of season three. It's the Singapore Sail Grand Prix. And what a performance as New Zealand comes in. The big story, they made contact with the U.S. boat during practice on Friday. They were docked four points by Chief Umpire Craig Mitchell. So they come into the event four points down, and here they are at the end of the day, the end of the weekend, as the champions of the Singapore Sail Grand Prix. And Stevie, they did it in style. They were clean and a especially when they needed it most, the starts were there for them. Well, yeah, we saw the wind did a big change just before the start of that race. We saw the rain coming in. Now, Pete, you obviously uh, saw that rain coming in before the start of the final a few days ago. I think I might have said you were a little bit silly uh, with that collision, but you've proved me wrong. What a comeback. You must be so proud of the team. Yeah, um, obviously, to put it all together today, uh, we thought we were yeah, in really good shape yesterday. We've been feeling really good, and you know, the last couple of events about to bounce back uh, with the win is just an absolutely amazing feeling. And yeah, everyone did an amazing job. Everyone's been working super hard, and uh, I think it just uh, all came together today, which is pretty nice. And how uh, how hard was that race with that big wing up? Looked pretty windy for the big wing. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> oh, I think I was most nervous in that first uh, round up in the pre-start. So it's um, yeah, something that. We managed to get both holes down, slow down enough, get rid of enough time, and then have a good run at it from the lower end, which yeah, we always knew the boat that was faster than the lower end would be first at Mark 1, so to be able to execute that, and that's nice as we did in those tricky conditions, is you know, something we're pretty stoked about. 
Pete, as to plan, you guys started off with a win in race number one. In race number two, you fall back to a fifth, then you get a second, and then a third, and then you wrap up with a first. It, it just, you couldn't have done it much better. Yeah, well, I think we've been standing consistently all week. Obviously, we're still, uh, it's a bit of a shame to have those penalty points uh, for the season uh, with just a tiny tap, but, you know, I think we really need to come out and, and show what we've got in this event after, after having that in the build-up, and it just shows you how strong this team actually is. Yeah, well, Pete, it was some performance. I uh, hope you get to go and enjoy yourself and uh, certainly put on a real show. First time Sail GP's been here in Singapore. Hey, thanks, James, guys. So the victory celebration continues for New Zealand Sail Grand Prix. We talked about it, Stevie. I don't think you'd ever draw this up. Hey, let's dig ourselves a four-point hole, <laughs> and then we'll come out, we'll win the first race, then we'll drop back to fifth and second race, and we might as well just win the whole thing. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly nothing like making it hard for yourself, but, but that's some crew they've got on board there. And uh, for Liv Mackay, great for her to get on board for a win. And, and, you know, it's everyone on board. Andy Maloney, the big grinders there. Josh Jr., it's Alex Sinclair at the front. Mark Hansen, I mean, it's just some lineup. There's a lot of horsepower, there's a lot of skill on board that boat, and I think they draw on that crew perhaps more than a lot of the other teams. They're getting Josh Jr. at the front to give the input, but this Danish crew, wow, they've got to be happy. They've got themselves up really close now. They're up to, uh, up to fifth in the standings, but just a couple of points off the podium, massive result for them. It's going to be all to play for in Sydney yeah. and in Christchurch over the next couple months. They have the opportunity to close that gap and get into the final. And no surprise to see Australia in there again. Tom Slingsby just has so much class on that boat. You talk about the talent on board uh, New Zealand. I think the Australians can match them. Yeah, and the fact they're bringing in subs to key roles like, like the wing. Wing trimming position is huge, but you know, Kinley Fowler, we had a little glimpse of him there. I mean, they're serial winners on board this Australian boat. Tom Slingsby's a serial winner. He sounded seriously hacked off as to how things yep. were going on the way around the course, but another podium, it's just relentless. How big of an advantage now is it for Tom Slingsby in Australia going to home waters and then going to New Zealand? They're staying close to home for the next two events. Close to home, nice time zone for them to be in, less of the jet lag, which we've heard a lot of the sailors complaining about over here in Singapore, especially the European-based ones. So. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens. One or remind you quickly again, it's February 18th and 19th. That'll be event number nine of season three in Sail GP. It is the KPMG Australia Sail Grand Prix in beautiful Sydney Harbour, Stevie. It is one of the most iconic venues of all of sailing. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the all time. And, and the best news of all is Lisa Darmanin promised us perfect <laughs> conditions. So, uh, so that's what we like, a perfect weekend guaranteed by Lisa. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, the celebration continues on, now making his way onto the boat. That is Lee Kuang Hai. He is the president of World Sailing to present the trophy to New Zealand Sail GP as they take home the Singapore Sail Grand Prix victory. So New Zealand gets the moment and now the bubbly comes on board and Stevie I'll tell you what after what they've been through getting here and the forecast that we got about low wind and the course is going to be possibly shortened and down to four to this moment they, they get the trophy they get the bubbly and it is all on now <laughs> yeah well they're pretty they've always impressed me with their champagne skills I must say they do seem pretty good at that and yeah I mean what a moment what a comeback they had to deal with the pressure they had four penalty points in Dubai and just missed the final. It looked like it was going to be deja vu repeating itself, but no, they held it together. What a performance today. And well, Tom Slingsby knows, in my opinion, that this New Zealand crew is the main challenger for his title when we get to San Francisco at the end of the season. Yeah, they do look like they know what they're doing out there, Emily, like they've been here before and uh, they make it look pretty easy. They do have a bit of experience on board, Todd. It's not like they're the beginners out yeah. there. All of these teams have extremely professional crews. Yeah. Well, just amazing 
experience here in Singapore and so glad that Sail GP was able to make this happen, opening another part of the world as they bring the world's best sailors and the fastest F-50s to these waters. This will be certainly a spot that people will be talking about for a long time, coming back to win the Singapore Sail Grand Prix. Well, if you think about the best shots we've seen for the last three or four days here in Singapore, there are many to choose from, but I think we go back to the first race today, race number three overall, race two three and this was the moment with Switzerland and France coming so close together. Yeah, I mean the Swiss. Seb said he didn't know exactly what the French were up to. I'm not sure I knew what anyone was up to, but look how tight it was. And it was a great moment because look how close the action in. But also that's our ninth team winning a race in Sail GP. Seb Schneider's Swiss team, a fantastic day for them today, first and a second. Let's not forget that. Turning up. Okay, and big one down. Big down. Big down. Big down. Big down. Oh, they stayed calm. They stayed pretty calm. How about that closing speed with Nathan Outeridge on board and now the French perspective? We <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. It's pretty tight, Todd. Yeah. There's not a lot of margin, that is for sure. What do you think the closing speeds are in that? Well, they're looking at the speeds on the mast, they're closing in at nearly 80 kilometers an hour, so there's not a lot of time to react. And you fly the boat a bit high, you lose control of a rudder, then suddenly you've got a really big, big issue. But of course, you know, we rely on having the best sailors in the world in these boats to be able to deal and not, not have a drama happen there. But, you know, the Swiss here, new to the F50 this season, new to Sail GP, and, and great to see them taking that race win. And then a second in the next race. It was, a, it was a brilliant day for them. They had the best day of any of the boats in the fleet racing, but in the background, that's what the Swiss want to be doing next time, going to where the Kiwis are. Speaking of which, we are heading down in the Southern Hemisphere, a little closer to home for Tom Slingsby and Peter Burling. Of course, coming up next, it'll be Sydney Harbor, and then it'll be on to Christchurch. We had a chance to speak with the two-time America's Cup champion, Peter Burling, about what it'll be like to sail in New Zealand. Hey, we're super excited to be hosting the first ever Sail Grand Prix in New Zealand down in uh, Littleton in Christchurch and it's uh, going to be awesome to have some home racing. It's been a little while since I actually raced down in, in Littleton Harbour but you now it's an amazing part of the world and yeah, traditionally you get quite good breeze, uh, especially if it's flying onshore so it uh, should make for some pretty good action. It's been amazing to see the support we've got from New Zealand, it's been incredible to watch the tickets go on sale, everything's been sold out within 24 hours and now we're just looking forward to putting on an amazing show. The F50 is an incredible boat, you know, it's amazing to, to see them ripping around. I'm sure most people have already seen them on TV, but you know, to see them in person is a, a whole other level. And with how close you're going to be to that racing in Christchurch, it's going to be pretty special. Looking forward to that event, but first, we're going to Sydney, February 18th and 19th. That'll be the next event on the calendar. Event number nine here in season three of Sail GP. It is the KPMG Australia Sail Grand Prix, where Tom Slingsby, the two-time reigning and defending champion, will hold court and we'll see if he can hold off the other eight teams to take home the top prize in one of the most iconic sailing venues in the world. So on behalf of Stevie Morrison, Emily Nagel, Lisa Darmanin, and our entire Sail GP crew, I'm Todd Harris saying so long for now. Once again, it's the Singapore Sail Grand Prix that goes the way of Peter Burling and New Zealand Sail GP. We'll see you in Australia. Sail GP that comes to Singapore and walks away with a victory.